Hello YouTube. How y'all doing today? Today here is Christmas Day. And I was thinking I will make a video on how we do grocery day. Um, there's a lot of things that we as adults and parents think other people know and apparently they don't. And so that's where we get a lot of our hacks from. I was watching a video the other day of a woman made a video about a laundry hack that's supposed to save you tons of time with laundry and it was to fold and hang your clothes up as they came out of the dryer. <laughs> didn't realize people didn't know that. But it's, nobody taught them. There's a lot of things nobody's teaching these days. Um, I don't know how that got missed. Um, I didn't really have a home ec class. I guess some of it we just kind of watch our parents. Some of it we watch, we learn on TV, Pinterest, just multiple things. But there's not really a home ec class that teaches things. So a grocery list. Uh, you need to make a grocery list so you don't forget things. Uh, you don't have to make multiple trips to the store unless you want to. Sometimes people go to different stores because they different things are on sale and if they're all really close and local and on your way anyway, and it's not really going to cost you extra, so that's fine. But if you don't have a list and then you go and you just buy whatever looks good and whatever's on sale or whatever's on clearance, then you get home and you're going to cook something. Oh, you don't have something. You have to go back to the store. That's more gas. You're also more likely to buy more impulse items near the front of the store, and that's going to cost you a lot of money. Now, if you have a lot of money to spend on your grocery bill, that's not a big deal. But for some of us on a budget, that's not what we want to do at all. Um, you can go to the store and get just clearance items and then build your meals around that. Like, I live a block away from a major grocery store. I live a block away from, like, three major grocery stores. So if I want to split my grocery shopping up, into two days and one day I can just go get clearance items and then I can go back another day and get the rest of the items to make meals out of those items I got I could do that um, sometimes I do something like that like if I end up like if I know I'm gonna run out of milk like halfway through the week I might do something similar to that and on that day I'll get clearance items and then the next time I'm making my grocery list I'll build meals around what I got on clearance um, I use some coupons, but not a whole lot. I only use coupons on something I was going to get anyway. And if it was either a brand I was going to get anyway, or if I know that brand's generally on sale, like buy one, get one free. Because if you use just coupons because you got a coupon for it and you're not like major couponing where you get things close to free or you know things are on sale, you're usually going to just spend more money than you would have spent anyway. There's tons of times I've got all kind of coupons to go get something. And I'll get to the store and I'll look at the price of the item and I'll look how much it'll be without the coupon or with the coupon. And I look at the generic and the generic is going to be cheaper even with the coupon. So that's really not always worth it. So just watch your prices like that. All right. So my grocery list for the week. First off, all through the week, as I run out of anything, write it down. Have an assigned place. And so the other people in your household can know too. If you write, eat the rest of this, write it down or tell me I'll write it down. Um, sometimes I'll have a place on the refrigerator to write it down, like a notepad or something. Right now, like I've got chore list up there. I've got a little calendar. I've got a little to-do list. Uh, this was my last week's shopping list. And what I do on my shopping list, I'll make random other notes too. But I go ahead and write down a couple of meals, what I want to eat that week, so I don't forget. Because sometimes if you decide what you're going to eat at the week, and then it comes midweek, and you're busy, and you're in a hurry, and you're like, what was I going to make? I got all the ingredients to make it, but I don't remember what I was going to make. So write that down and keep it somewhere you'll know it. So, off topic. Step one, keep track of what you ran out of during the week. Step two, look through your pantry the day before you go to the grocery store and see what you have to work with. Now you can either decide I don't want to use what I have on hand that's like canned goods because they're going to be good for a long time or I don't want to really factor those in a whole lot because you want to save them for when you need them or you can say okay here's what I have and I need to make this work because this is a broke week. I don't know about y'all but I have my weeks where I have 
more leeway in my grocery bill and I have weeks where I'm like, this is what we got. School's coming up and we got to pay fees, things like that. So kind of keep, you know what your budget is and you know what you need to work with. Um, so you look in the pantry, you see what you have, you see what you need, and then make down your list of either meals working with what you have in your pantry or what you want to eat that week. Try to keep in mind what your family will actually eat. It's no good to try a bunch of new things if you know certain kids aren't going to eat it and then you're just going to have to listen to them complain. Because you also don't want to waste a lot of food. Um, I usually make a list of about six meals and then I kind of build around it. Like I know the kids are also going to need snacks for school and snacks for after school, breakfast cereals, things like that. You're going to need to keep on hand still. Uh, some people will track those in their meals and you need this many breakfasts, this many lunches, this many dinners. During the summer, I need to do that, but during the school year, uh, lunch for the baby and me is either leftovers from the night before, or we'll do like a cheese, meat, fruit and cheese plate. We'll have fruit, some string cheese, and some homemade bread, or we'll do peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and chips. So those are things we have to keep on hand. Um, another thing when you're going grocery shopping, it is almost never best to buy an item singularly. What I mean by that is if you are going to make one meal this week with hamburger meat, don't buy one pound of hamburger meat and bring that home. Buy the five or ten pound pack, whatever you can afford, even if it's only, you know, like the two and point two five pound packs. Go ahead, you take it, you bring it home, and you separate it. You can either A, take it raw and separate it, which is what I usually do, and I will take it. And I will smush the tar out of it. Like, can you see how flat this is? Like, I take the meat, I separate it, here we go. And that thaws really quickly. So I can have, like, five of those in there a week. So the next week, I don't have to hardly buy any hamburger meat if I want to make hamburgers. Um, chicken doesn't smush so well, but I'll get a big thing of chicken breast, which is not the most economically friendly portion but I like chicken breast I don't like doing the bones I don't like doing the skin so I'll go ahead and I will get like the big pack of the boneless skinless chicken breast separate it into two packs of breast put it in a Ziploc baggie freeze it uh, you can also go ahead and cook all your hamburger meat and freeze that you can cook a lot of your chicken breast and freeze it. You can take the whole pack of chicken breast, really, put it in your crock breast, crock pot, and then shred it and freeze it that way. That way, not only do you have more meals, they're already partially cooked, so that will save you time cooking later. Um, pot roast, you could do the same thing. Just think about it, and you'll, you'll think about things you can do. Um, if I'm going to have green beans with a meal, I don't ever buy two cans of green beans. I go ahead and figure out which one's on sale and get a lot of them. Um, I think Libby's has like four packs that you can get for two dollars so that are 50 cents a can. So I'll get those. So that way I keep some canned vegetables on hand. I keep some meat on hand. Rice, things like that. Cream of chicken soup, cream of celery soup, cream of mushroom soup. Keep those on hand because if all those fails, you can throw meat and cream with some kind of soup in the crock pot, put it over some rice, and there's a meal. You never want to get to where your pantry is completely empty, if you're a mom especially, because you never know when it's going to get to grocery day and a kid's going to get a stomach flu or a kid's going to get a virus or a kid's going to get something and you're not going to want to leave the house with that child and there's nobody who can watch that child or you're not going to leave them alone. So it could be two or three days before you get to go to the grocery store and then you're starving and you're relying on your husband to go to the grocery store. I don't know about you, but that's not an ideal situation here. He would go. Don't get me wrong. He would go. Now, if he could make work out my handwriting or my notes and know what to get, probably not. Um, another thing I think I like to keep on hand is like some frozen lasagnas. They're not the most budget friendly. You can get the generic ones, but like I can buy a lasagna for like twelve dollars. The big, because we have to get the party size. Those ones they say are family size. I don't know what family they're going by, but my family needs the party size. But we also, like I said, the baby and I will eat leftovers for lunch the next day. I send leftovers with my husband for lunch at work to save us some money that way too. So six servings, or a lot of them say family size, and it's five servings. 
There's six people in this house, so we've got to get the party size.